TLO, what's poppin'? Y'all are on Twitch, we are live, but by the time you see this, we will not be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it, little warning screen, just in case, probably won't need it, but read it in a week. Don't forget, we are on twitch.com. That's where you can catch this live stream. The username's at the bottom of the screen. Um, also, we are we got um, Patreon, where we post five days per week. Oh, actually, it's more days. Well, we post seven days a week now, don't we? Because the, uh, the Premier League highlights. Yeah, we be watching that stuff right there, man. And even if you don't want to become a paid-for member there, you can become a free member. And whenever there's something that you want to watch that pops up, you can specifically select that video and just only watch that one if you ever wanted to do that. And just throwing it out there, man. I'm making it, you know, what it is. Anyway, this is Camp Pay. We'll take it away. Season 5, episode... You see it in the title. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Low key, I've been looking forward to this. This show is coming to an end. And it's breaking my heart. Fuck. <laughs> my bad, I didn't mean to. Anyway, talk to me. Over the first quarter of 2017, nearly 30,000 county court judgments were issued against businesses in England and Wales. If y'all ever see me slightly looking this way, it's because there's a full screen right here. Like whatever's playing behind me, there's it's a full screen to my left. If I look at the screen in front of me, there's a bunch of other stuff. I'll be looking at one here sometime. A 36% rise from the previous year. The average value of business judgments during this period exceeded £2,700. The total value of county judgments against businesses in England and Wales rose to 81 million pounds in the first quarter of 2017. Tough. High Court Enforcement Agents Steve Pinner and Max Carraher are in Wilsdon, North London. We got, what happened to the other one? Steve and, and Paul, both here. What happened to Paul? I ain't seen him in a minute. Max is cool too because he's negative and people always want to beat him up, it seems like, but... Ah, I know where I am now. That's the way it went, but you'll see the eye in a bit. They're here to recover a debt of almost £15,000 owed by London Rental and Sales Limited to a property developer. That's a considerable amount of money. Can you see the place? LRS, it? Yeah, right. Okay, okay, okay let's go. Let's Ready, go. let's go. A county court judgment ruled against the knee, but it wasn't paid to the High Court. It's not now me, Max so. and Steve need to find company directors, Bathsheba Apter and Daniel Moore, to get the debt paid off in full today. Can I speak to some management, please? Hello, sir. Are you the manager here? Uh, one of the many. How can I be okay. to you? My name's Max Carrohurst, my colleague Steve Pinner. We're both enforcement agents sent here with a High Court writ. Does that ring a Does that ring a bell at all? Yeah. What's your name, madam? Are you Batsheva? Yeah. That's you. Okay. So you're a director. There's an outstanding balance of fourteen thousand and eighty-two pounds and fifty-five pence. There was a on Friday when I went real No, the state of the CCJ is the seventh of the. He said, "Why weren't we aware?" There was a court case for Friday regarding this. Why weren't we aware? You obviously were. You knew when the court date was, didn't you? 11th, 2016. High court judgment date, 23rd of the 1st, 2017. There was another court case on Friday. There was another court case? It was supposed to be. So what so, was the result? 
They didn't turn up. Company director Bathsheba Apta claims the case is being appealed. But as the latest hearing was dismissed, the writ is... This way, man, see, me especially when I that I'm jumping into this real applicable business bag. Like, this is the stuff that I will not be a part of. If I can't afford it, I ain't even drawing for it. Now, I get it. I'm going to have a business credit, this, that, and the third. But at the same time, listen, I got to have money right then and there. <laughs> oh, yeah, can we write you a, 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 a this, that, and that? No, you can't. You can pay me right now through whatever app you need to play me through, buddy, because I ain't going for that. I am not having it. This is just a headache. And she knows she lying. It's still active and must be enforced. If you pay the money, the 14 days, the money is secure. That gives you 14 days to go through the system, work the system. And if Steve got on a Cartier bracelet. That mug sells eight dollars. Y'all ain't see this? This Cartier bracelet he got on. This is eight thousand dollars. He got money, money. Days, the money is secure. That gives you fourteen days to go through the system, work the system, and if it's in your favour, then that gets it resolved. At the moment, the case is still live. Has, there is no stay of execution. That's the problem. Whilst the agents give Bathsheba some time to try and sort payment, Max starts an inventory of seizable assets. When you start nicking stuff? We won't be, we won't be nicking anything, sir. That's not how we work. We're here on behalf of the High Court. Bathsheba has one of the other directors on the phone. And who's this? Hello, sir. Hello there. Can we just come to some agreement? All I need is for you to authorise the young lady here to pay the bill. It's put in our client account for 14 days. And if you're, su if you're successful... But the other director, Daniel Moore, seems unwilling to make a payment. Instead, he makes a fresh claim. Everything in that office belongs to Agatha. It does not belong to on the rentals of sale. And if you're removing any goods, you're going to be removing my goods, and I'm Agatha Limited. And if you're doing it against the law, if you want to come and have a meeting with me, and I'm there, I'm more than happy to sit down with you. We can't just go in there and fully and start taking things out of there. While Mr. Moore maintains that all the goods and assets belong to a Mr. Moore wants to be in control so bad. He's talking about if you come to me, buddy, we're in your office. Come prove it. We're in your office. I don't know where this entitlement has come from. You owe 15 bands. We're here to collect. Rather you're here or not, <laughs> it's going to be done. Different company, Steve needs to see proof. Yeah. I actually need black and white paperwork to say that this is the transfer of all the goods from this company to this company. This is your office here, so to it. If you want to come back tomorrow, I can show you all the paperwork. Unfortunately, we're here and we've been instructed to come today, sir. We often come across people that try and use different companies in the attempt to run away from their debts that they run up. I don't see it as frustration so much. You see, now this is what I'm talking about. This is how Max be getting people. Look, he disconnecting stuff. <laughs> it's more of a game for them. And obviously we're there to collect on behalf of the claimant. So it's our job to try and find out the loopholes that they've fallen into. Steve and Max have now been on the premises for almost 40 minutes. But the directors haven't made any attempt to raise the money the company owes. See a lot of keys. So Max for... continues his inventory. I've been here for a long time. I can tell when people are going to pay it or not. But the directors are adamant that the assets belong to another company. Yeah. You can't issue something under London Rentals and Management. You're mixing up two different companies. The law dictates that I need an original bill of sale to show where the ownership is. If you find that, that's fine. To break the stalemate, Max looks for documents linking the assets to the debtor company. Oh, there we go, look. Bank statements, yeah. November it's to just to be repossessed as well. It's not to be repossessed, we'll gain intelligence. And makes an important discovery. And the rental and sales, the balance of 140,000. This is what we call a won't pay. As the bank statements appear to show the company can afford to pay the debt. So they got a balance of almost 200K, just are choosing not to. Yeah, see, it'd be that, like as a worker, I ain't really trying to even have this conversation no more.
Either pay me or I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. In full, Max is forced to take action. Okay, I'm escalating the case to the sale and disposal stage. Everything's getting unplugged. If you tell all your staff to start saving up their work. The agent starts packing up office equipment ready for removal. Yeah. We've had enough. Very much. Yes. I've asked if we can get a payment and, and you've said no. There's plenty of office goods here, IT equipment. I'm asking you to just keep out of our way no, while we no, do a complete no, no. removal. No, just because you want your way, I want my way. My Unfortunately, way I'm here on behalf of the High Court and my way wins. But Thanks. then Bathsheba receives another call from Mr Moore. Please don't lock us in, that would be a serious mistake. She instructs a colleague to lower the shop shutters. Uh, see now y'all out here kidnapping. See. Okay. Okay. Stop. With the door to the property now blocked, Max and Steve are in an unpredictable situation. Stop. 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 I just called. Do what y'all normally do. Call the police. This what they want anyway. Steve Penner and Max Fats. No, we don't need to. Really now the agents must need make no it clear that blocking them in is a criminal offence. To obstruct us in the course of our duty criminal is a criminal offence. Oh, okay. So please don't do that. Not fully, even this. One. Not even this. Fully open the shutters. Fully open the shutters, please. Thank you very much. The agents have been on the premises for 50 minutes. Top tier negativity. Where's With no Mr. Moore? Payment, Max calls for a recovery firm to take the goods away. Hi, oh, I want to do a complete removal. Can you send contractors down as soon as possible? Okay, no problem. I'll get that sorted. Right, guys, all these screens are going. If you can save up your work for me, please. But then another man arrives. Well, it's a different type of money. I see it on the Hello, top sir. of their head. It's over. <laughs> We have paperwork which allows us to be here. Who are you, sir? Sorry, I'm Mr. Schwab. I'm a colleague of Mr. Moore. You're a colleague? Yeah. OK. If you get permission from the director, then I can speak to you. I have a high court writ. Yes. Of course you can see the high court writ. Yes. So it's against LRS. Have you established that whatever you're touching is that belongs to LRS? Onus of proof isn't on ourselves. I'm not here to fight you. Really. No, we're not here to fight either. You know. After seeing the High Court writ, Mr. Schwain starts. Like, do they not? He said the owners of LRS. If I walk into an establishment and they say LRS on it, I can assume that everything in this building is LRS is until y'all show me something else. It's as simple as that. You know what it is. He know what it is. Starts to negotiate. Buddy looked like he worth $5.32 million. Like, chill out. On behalf of company director Daniel Moore, they got the chairs. Well, I'm suggesting that yeah, I mean, it's a lot of money. Can he pay something now? We've we've and told the young lady. Yeah. If they pay the debt now, which is fifteen yes, thousand. Yeah. They haven't got fifteen grand. Yes, now. they have. I'm asking they you, have. They've got the money. Well, how do you know they've got the money? Well, they oh, there was a bank account. statement in the account. Oh, that's in it. That's not okay. Oh, he said, oh, you've seen it. Yeah. For a company which the keys on the wall prove it. It's a property. But company director Bathsheba still insists that the company can't afford to pay in full. All these people are out of business. Sure. Don't accept the, payment, the reason we're not doing this is because that every, every move we've made, we've put up a barrier. So we feel that you're not being cooperative. Mr. Schwain takes Bathsheba to one side. I thought, I thought, I thought we got it in there, we got it out. It's always they got the key money. to find somebody who will half listen to start with. Then you can talk to them and hopefully they can get through to the person that's not listening to you. It's another tool that we have to use to try and get the message across. Minutes later, Mr. Schwaim is back to talk to the agents. I'm arranging that you'll get it. Okay. Once we get authorization from our company, our head office, they'll get a receipt for the money that's paid. The company has agreed to pay the fifteen thousand seven hundred pounds. What he said? Oh, you, oh, you. How do you know that we have it? We've seen it. Ah, tried to lie, couldn't lie. That's now Check that is funny. Check your bank for clearing. Check your bank for clearing. Sorry, just authorized. Okay. Steve calls the office to check payment has gone through. 
Jenny, I'm looking for £15,714.55p. Thank you very much. Which means Max never really called for recovery. He was good capping because they didn't add the fee on. Very much. Are they paid it? Yeah, it's gone, it's gone through. After almost three hours at the premises, the case is finally resolved. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, we know who that is. That's the accountant. <laughs> hey, but he got the money. You're not going to tell me you rent in London and you, you're a renting firm in London and you ain't got no cash in the bank. Cut it out. So, whether it comes within 10 minutes or five hours, it is absolutely great when we win. They've thrown everything at us and through all the odds, we've come out on top. Yeah, I ain't feel bad for them. Once I seen Buddy walk through that door and all the attire that he had on from head to from toe to head, I knew that there was money there. <laughs> I knew that, that, that when that walked through the door, money's there. We're not, you can't, there's no way you're gonna lie to me now. You could have stayed home and maybe that would have been like a valuable fight. But once you came through the door, 100%, I want payment. You got it. Collecting a sum of money owed to somebody who rightfully deserves it. Great work on that, sir. Absolutely excellent. We tried our hardest. A leading motoring organisation estimates that the number of UK drivers handed parking fines by private companies has more than doubled in the last five years. Research suggests that private parking tickets are being issued at a rate of one every seven seconds. With that's ridiculous. That's, that's the finesse of it all. Penalty charges often reaching up to £100. It's an estimate that there are more than 8 million private parking tickets have been issued in the UK over the last two years. That's crazy. Seven AM. High Court enforcement agents Gareth Short and Mitch Starr are in Town Hill, Swansea. You seem quite low today. Man, who? Who? We in episode twenty-one of the last season, and you got the nerves to introduce two new people. Hey, I am really low. Who's that? Like? Whenever it's sunny, you're happy. Yeah. Green and you're sad. If you're in the wrong country, you're hot now. What? <laughs> Today, they're looking for David Williams, who owes almost £2,000 in unpaid parking fines. My say, I. The case began when Mr. Williams parked on private property without Ooh. buying valid tickets. Red windows. That's the one. The parking company escalated the case to the High Court, and now Mr. Williams must pay the money he owes today. Keep my eye on this window, by the way. Well, he ain't got it. David Stanley Williams, is it? Correct. You got me. Yeah. What do you High Court enforcement agent. 22 David. quid, is it? 22 pounds? Is it 22 quid? No, more, more like £1,981. Uh, I don't know, I forgot about that one. What the no. fuck is that one about now? Okay, the High Court enforcement agent. Yeah, right. You'd execute the High Court writ against you with unpaid parking fines. You ain't got your fucking money. No. No. Yeah, and yeah. how the fuck can you get blood out of this stone? Go and get changed, maybe we'll stand by your way for you. No, like, fuck the thing. Like. trying to work with it. We're trying to give you time here to get this sorted. I have told you I've got no fucking money. Right. Can't work with you. Can't work with fuck all. No. Aggressive, Thank you very much. How are you, all right? Are you Mrs. Williams? Yeah, if I'm his wife. Don't move work from where you are, then. Huh? No point being aggressive. What do you want me to do? I need you to well, stop, stop it. Stop it. Stop all we can do. Thank you very much. No lie, W wife. W wife for talking sense. As the agents get invited into the property, Mitch tries to calm Mr. Williams down. Let's start again, right? Let's, let's lower, lower, our, lower our voices. We'll stop the lamp, bad language and we'll start again from the start, right? He got a whole bunch of BS in here too. What the hell is all of this? 
this a curtain or a or a or a, or a hanger rod? What are we doing? Why are there clothes on the curtain area? Mr. Williams is keen to tell the agents his side of the story. I was told that I didn't have to pay it because it was a private what, company. What's it for? All the parking tickets. Yeah, well, unfortunately, he did get told that because it was on private property that he didn't need to pay it. It seems that Mr. Williams had been told by friends that fines issued from private parking companies couldn't be recovered by high. Your friends are idiots. <laughs> what are you talking about? That doesn't even make sense. Why would they send you off like that? The court enforcement agents. Gareth sets the record straight. They wouldn't just issue fines for the sake of it, would they? I don't know. And if it be online, everything would be online says as well. About private property. County court judgment and the high court writ says different, unfortunately. Well, yeah, we know that now. There's a myth going around, especially on social media, that you don't need to pay private parking company fines because they can't enforce their own fines. Part of that is correct, can't enforce them, but we can. So if you are racking up your private parking company fines, just be careful because they are going to transfer you to the county court and then ultimately to the yeah, high court and they'll it. be knocking your door. So we can remove assets where they can't. The agent's visit has clearly come as a shock. But Gareth and Mitch must make Mr. Williams understand what he needs to do next. How much are you looking for for today? We had to collect the full balance, mate. 1900 quid. No, I ain't got that today. We can't remove anything from you because I will stop you. Okay, for you, I'll phone the police and have you for, for obstructing an enforcement agent doing his duty. I will stop you, I'm telling you now. Okay. Like we right. said, we, we're here to help you, right, David? So the last thing you want to do is start removing assets. And I'm nobody I can put. I've recently just got off benefits. I've been trying to make away from for myself and I get pissed off because I got fucking people coming after me for money all the time. And it's hard. When I get when I didn't clear of all my debt, another one knocks the fucking door and it pisses me off even more. I'm a doorman myself, so Sounds like you need to some some uh some counseling. Not only some counseling, you need some money management skills. Now, I know you just got off benefits and you're working towards a better financial position, but you know. Oh, I don't have great money. It's clear Mr. Williams has hit hard times, but the agents must try and get some sort of repayment for the claimant. Gareth gives him some time to try and raise whatever he can. Okay, so it's now half past. We'll give it till 22. We'll give it another 10 minutes. You keep pushing. There's no Dad, way. Where the hell am I supposed to get the money from? I can't do nothing. If you stop him, you're going to be locked up. You think I can stop him? Can I go past? Yeah, no problem. How much do you want? One thousand nine hundred eighty-one pounds, please. And Sixty pence. Realizing the agents aren't going to go away, Mr. Williams gets on the phone. I know it's nothing to do with you, but is there any chance you can maybe two grand and pay back to Man, that's a crazy call to receive. Yeah, can you lend me two? Whoa, let's backtrack there, buddy. Let's. Yeah, that's the answer that I would have had. Said no, mate, did it? Yeah. So I really don't know what we can do. No, we know one of these people who say that we can't afford it. And then all of a sudden we get money. No, we no, really can't it's... afford to pay it. I've been getting upset over it. You told me to pay it, I should have paid it. I was listening to other people before you, again. With any sort of payment looking unlikely, the agents are duty bound to look for some assets of value. There's nothing on you that's it's all right, right? right? We'll have a quick look upstairs then. We'll have a look at that. There's an edge cutter over there. Please don't take that. Anything I got? 
Oh, but you gotta have a look right. It soon becomes clear that there's nothing of any value in the house. Yes. Do you wanna go and have a chat with your missus? Let's see if anything of anybody else. There is nobody else. As soon as you walk through that front door, realistically you know if this debt's gonna be paid or not. Or if not, if the well, debt I think has he's been here before. To remove but some I just of don't know. know straight away that it's potentially not gonna get paid. So we have got a heart. We just wanna work with them really and try and get the debt paid off on their terms, but also terms that the client are happy with. The agents are running out of options. What do you think, Ken? Just wasting time, away. Do you agree? Wasting time. Yeah. Gareth decides to throw Mr. Williams a lifeline. It's not very often we do this, right? But we'll ask you for a grand in seven days and I remain in balance in 28. So it's a thousand pound in seven days and nine the pound 21 days after that. Right. Some months. Got a month to get 1900 pound. Right. What do you think about that? We can give it a go. Give it a go. That's all we can do. Mr. Williams to agrees to pay a thousand pounds in a week's time and then pay the remaining balance in instalments. All right then, do your best. All right, then take care, both. Well. Up. Right. Up. It's been a difficult case for the agents. There was no money inside the house. Um, he was on poor wages, but it looks like he's just been a doorman, so um, it, was, it was impossible to get any kind of result there. But any kind of positive result, wasn't it? Yeah, there's, there's nothing we could do anyway, was there? No. Gareth and Mitch faced an almost impossible situation. But in Paul and Max's next case... Ah, 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 ah. Stop talking. I need to keep talking. We're in Vic... Latest government figures nearly 9,000 households in England and Wales were evicted from their homes during the first quarter of 2017. The number has risen by more than a quarter in the last seven years, and last year, more than 130,000 landlords applied to courts to get their properties back. More than 260,000 properties in England and Wales have been re repossessed by landlords since the beginning of the decade. High Court Enforcement Agents Paul Bowhill and Max Carraher are in Barking, right. East London, to carry out an eviction. But what are we doing today? We have a writ of possession for a Mr. Mohammed Abdullah. Mr. Abdullah has been renting a flat for six years with his wife and hey. two children. But when his tenancy came to an end, his landlord decided not to renew his lease. Which he has every right to do, so. It's flat. On the top floor, I suppose. <clears throat> Notice of eviction was sent by the county court, but was ignored. So the case was escalated to the High Court, and now the tenants must leave today. I feel like. Okay, six years is a long time, and nobody really likes to move. Like, I get it, but like. You got six years rental history minimum and probably in good standings. Maybe not. I don't know why he wants you out, but I would have just moved. I'm gone. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. They we got have a cameras. repossession order for this property. My husband is not at home, so I can't get you Do you want to ring your husband? Hello? Are you still there? My husband is coming. The agents have the right to force entry, but they decide to wait for her husband to arrive. I think the shock of having your home repossessed must be only next to the death of an immediate relative. 
it's absolutely devastating to have the home and the circumstances that you have known to be suddenly taken away from you, which of course is what happens when we turn up. Oh. Five minutes later, Mr Abdullah arrives. Hello, sir. How are you, mate? Mr Abdullah. Yeah. My name is Paul Bowhill. Hi, Paul. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. This is Max Carroll. We have a High Court writ here. Mm-hmm. It's, uh... It instructs us to repossess the property today. Were you aware of this? Yeah, I am aware of it. And... Uh... What is it, rent arrears or it's the end no, of the no, tenancy? No, 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 he's selling the property. All right. How yeah. long do I have? You have an hour to vacate the property. Uh, if you can just give me today. No, I can. it's got to be now. But all you need to do is to take what you're likely to need for 24 hours. The landlord is obliged to let you back into the property. I feel like specifically we haven't been through this type of case in a little minute. I feel like it's all been businesses and and debts owed to people specifically from one other like, like this like an eviction one we ain't seen. So that you can get your personal possessions out and then get down to the council as quickly as you can. So okay. what I'd like you to do is if you open the door, explain it to your wife. She is scared. She's scared. Oh, no, <laughs> I know. Don't she worry. Is. I will. Can I? Yeah. Yeah, can yeah, I? Of course, of course. I understand that this is probably the worst day of your life, mm -hmm. which is why we asked her to call you, and which is why we've stood down until you've got here. Thank so, you. Come, come on in. Come on. In. Let me take you. Sorry. Things to be going quite smooth. Mr. Abdullah needs to reassure his wife before letting the agents into the flat. <clears throat> Money. 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 I'll show you the name, Kulo. I'm Don't worry, Kulo. Don't worry, to me get the Kulo, it'll take you to your body or the ticket, or should be done. It'll do no work with this name, Kulo. Oh, okay. Don't worry. Come on, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Y'all not packed a little bit or nothing? Uh, Hello. Hi, that's, that's the, don't worry, don't worry, you calm down, okay? John. Don't worry, okay. that's fine, okay. don't worry. Okay. This is so a small child, it changes the circumstances. I need at least two hours so that like, I put everything in the back. We can't allow two hours, you only have an hour. Okay. I'll start on that if that's all yeah. right. Yeah. My colleague's going to change the lock, so he'll stop okay. on doing that. Please don't forget anything, make sure you've got everything you're likely to need. Okay. Thank you. While Max changes the locks, Paul wants to find out more kind of about how too, the family key. got themselves into this situation. If I can just clarify, what's happened is you've been, you've lived here for six years, but the landlord now wants to sell, sell the property, which is fair enough, obviously. Everything right. started when my when, when my wife was pregnant, heavily pregnant. Yeah. But suddenly he told me one day that uh, he's selling the property. I said, okay, fine. And from that moment is when you should have started as a man. From that moment, when your heavily pregnant wife was staring at you in the face, that's when you should have started looking for a property, an apartment. So I would have been like, all right, cool. Because uh, you had plenty of time. Let me hear the rest of it. Have you looked at any rented I property? I did, because I got multiple health issues. I lost my job. And uh, I couldn't afford this deposit because, as you know, like, 600 pounds just the uh, fees for these for the age yeah okay i have a glaucoma cataract and uvi just and the sleep apnea you're a complete write-off really i'll say sleep apnea <laughs> okay but you actually work now you're still working uh yes i'm self-employed try to make a living Okay. Can. Have you made any approaches to the council yet? They said like uh, uh, until you come, they can't help us. Yeah, that's the story of your life. But they're there now. You got a small child. It's up. With the accommodation and stuff. Right. So, had no problems with the landlord. I take it you've paid your rent on time. When you got the first notice of the eviction order, you took that down to the council. Yes. Yeah. They told me like on. No, no cap. When you self-employed. It is a lot harder to do anything in the rental game. Like, you got to come with 
I took like crazy amounts of money. <laughs> like that deposit, plus they want normally, in America they want a deposit, which is normally the same as, no it's not, I'm taking, it's like six, seven hundred. And then depending where you go is the fee. And then they normally want first first month and last month plus the deposit. If you like self employed like me, like a YouTuber, they want six months. <laughs> they want something crazy. They want six months in advance. They received the letter you just gave me. Yeah. They can't. They can't help me at all. I told them my circumstances. I got a five months old son. Yes. Five years old daughter. Yeah. And uh, I got multiple health issues, but still they said like, yeah. no, we can't help you unless uh, oh. you come in and uh, take over. It seems that the council well, told Mr. Can. Abdullah he couldn't be rehoused before the family were evicted and became officially homeless. My point was like, if you knew that I'm going through this thing, so why not help me Sorry. when okay. I was in a position not to upset anyone? Uh, I, 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 I understand his case. Once again, it's the council. He knew this was coming. He couldn't provide. He couldn't do what he was supposed to do. He went to the council for help. They gave him this BS stuff right here. I could have like moved my stuff and uh, no one had to go through all this. No. Uh, the only explanation they can possibly give is they've got pressure on the housing stock. They don't know which way to turn because they've got more people needing houses so smart. than they've ever got houses to give them. Right? But this question of saying don't move out to the bailiff's come, it creates a pressure point which is here today. I'm just sorry that it's come to this. I think it's terrible. If we do four evictions in a day, we get exactly the same readout four times. They're always told to wait. If they leave the property before the bailiff is there, they will have made themselves intentionally homeless and they won't be rehoused. So it's an absolute catch-22. The agents have been in the house for almost 20 minutes when a family member turns up to help. Hello. Are you okay? Are you in family? You're on family. Your family, are you? Yeah, yeah. my my my. Oh, cousin. priest. Yeah, I'm, I'm Paul. But the situation is taking its toll, and Mr. Abdullah wants to explain more about the impact the eviction could have on his family. I feel uh, really, uh, really stressed out. I don't know where they're gonna uh, 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 put me or temper. Where they're gonna give me temporary accommodation? My daughter is school is here. I'm a self-employed, so I. I got uh, my customers and uh, most of most of my customers are based here and my hospitals are here so I don't know what's going to happen to me and mm, yeah that's rough that is rough it's, it's difficult it's it's, it's difficult it's really re re difficult the family's time to pack their essentials and leave is up. Take care. Thank you. Be good. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's all right. Now homeless, the family will have to apply to the council to provide emergency accommodation. Take care. As Max finishes That's installing the new locks, the landlord arrives to take right. possession of the property. That's all right. No problem. It's all. Uh, it's all done. All the locks are changed. There you go, guys. So this is sold, is it? You just need... Well, just really, yeah, I mean, it was sold. It soon becomes clear that having had to wait for seven months to yeah. get his property back, it's been a difficult time. We, we started trying to go through the process in June. Um, and I said to him, look, this is the situation, sold. Served him notice on October the 3rd. Yep. Um, I said to him, look, don't pay rent for two months, because we never took a deposit, so I said, don't take, uh, pay rent for two months. Mm. It gives you enough time to build some money up, deposit, etc. Yeah, he did more than... <laughs> he did more than he had to do as a landlord. With the flat now back in the possession of the landlord, the eviction is complete. If you look at that, is this a pretty... Yeah, I mean, I still put it on the council, but also... You was paying rent before, so what happened? He said, don't pay rent for two months. That's deposit money. Doc, example really, yeah. isn't it? Genuine people, circumstances exacerbated, sadly, 
by the council's policy not to give them a new property until it's until the, the bailiffs turn up with the yeah. repossession order. Yeah, we blame it on the council, doesn't it? He's lived there for six years. I feel really sorry for him. Seems an absolutely genuine bloke. Then you see the other half, that the landlord comes in and he was getting so stressed because this was taking so long. I feel really sorry for that. Yeah. So you've got both sides of the story. 7030, his fault, yeah. Recent research has shown that over a third of the UK's small and medium-sized businesses are struggling with late payments. Nearly one in five businesses affected by overdue payments report that being owed between 20 and 50,000 pounds would be enough to drive them into bankruptcy. Small businesses spend more than two billion a year chasing overdue payments. H, appreciate the High Court enforcement Sub with pride, Gareth 14 Short months in a row. Rich Star are in Brimoire, South Wales. They're here to collect a large debt of just over £12,000 owed to a utility company for an unpaid electricity bill. How much? On the way to... They're here to collect a large debt of just over £12,000 owed to a utility company for an unpaid electricity bill. <laughs> On the way to see oh, there's a secret grow right. house in there? Oh, it was 12,000. 12, 12 grand's worth of electric, it's a lot, isn't it? The agents have been given a home address and another for a commercial property. That's what we're looking for, but fantastic. Sunday shop makes sense. Fantastic, it's crazy. It's going to have a lot of electric, wouldn't it? There we are. Knowing there might be goods to seize here, the agents visit this address first in the hope that the threat of removing business assets might prompt a swift payment. I've got Kayleigh Cartwright, please. Yes, Kayleigh. <laughs> you able to, get, able to get on the phone for her? I can try and get on to uh, my name, David. Um, I'm going to have to get up here, David. There's something to do with Kayleigh. Is Kayleigh able to phone you? Who do look like he should be in a police interceptors? It's like he failed the test, and this is the <laughs> this was what was left on the board or something. I feel like he is a police. He looked like one of them. Is Kaylee able to phone you? Brilliant. Thank you. Hello. Hi, mate. Hi, David. Is it? Yeah. David, look for Kaylee. Any chance you could turn the? If, if no, not at all. No, we won't be leaving the salon now. I, uh -huh. I, I suggest you get Kaylee no. up here, mate, to deal with it. We won't be leaving the salon no, now. Uh, all right, I'm on my way over. The receptionist's nephew, David, claims that he now owns the shop. And just minutes later, he arrives. We're going to have to see some paperwork, buddy. Hey, mate. Hey, you're David, you? Yeah. Hey, mate, all right? Look for Kaylee, we are, buddy. Nothing to do with me, so I don't want to go Yeah, yeah, we don't can want to leave. Can I tell you my um, lease? That I own this property and you can leave then, yeah? No, no, we'll do a thorough search of the property. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Then. Let's do, it. do your thorough search. The agent's notes say clearly that Kaylee is linked to this address. Suspicious of the man's claims, they investigate further. So, why is Kaylee giving this address that, mate? Kaylee, you've known this address before. Is she any relation to yourself, mate? Or? No, no ex partner, nothing like that. Ex partner, maybe, years ago. How long ago, mate? The lease for the premises is in David's name, but it doesn't prove that Kaylee doesn't still own the business. I'm not gonna lie, this is in David's name. That doesn't seem up to code. <laughs> this it just, just doesn't seem correct. But it doesn't prove that Kaylee doesn't still own the business and its assets. Gareth turns detective. I've got to warn you now, as soon as I find one letter with Kaylee's name on it, mate, I will be enforcing the rip you, yeah? If there is any documentation, his letters would have been said, yeah, that they couldn't pass on Kaylee's. And he quickly finds yeah. something. It's a contract here for the utility warehouse. That was the last thing you saw of them, mate. Eh? It do matter. It's very cagey, there's some information about here, mate. Yeah, maybe it does. OK. It's just funny. Confused why you still got letters, but from it. 
the pile of letters are all addressed to Cayley. But then Gareth finds a court document relating directly to the debt they are here to enforce. Come on now, mate. Where is the original judgment for claimant on the floor over there for Cayley? Right by there. Right by there. So, so Cayley doesn't even know anything about this. So why has it been opened then? Yeah, yeah, you're not supposed to open mail that's not yours. Isn't that a thing in the UK too? That's like a federal offense? Or whatever, the, uh, an offense? You can't open mail that's not yours. It's not looking good, bruv. So who has opened in and thrown on the floor over there? You always opened there. Anyone? You always opened in probably there for Kaylee. We, we wasn't born yesterday, right? right? With evidence to suggest that Kaylee has been trading from the premises, the agents have the right to remove goods belonging to her to offset the debt. But David still insists that the business and its assets belong to him. Do you want to show you what the summit belong to? Yes, please. And also the computer, the desks and everything, right? The receipts for every single asset within the side of the building. Yes. Yeah. David shows Mitch an inventory David on got his, his computer. Paperwork going. He thinks proves that he owns all oh. the equipment in the salon. This we're going to show the individual sunbeds on the other mate. So we're, we're looking for make and models for each sunbeds, chairs, computer, computer system. That means nothing to us, mate. Nothing to It might, might do to you. It wouldn't to the courts either. The inventory is just a general list of equipment without specific make and model numbers, and it's not proof of ownership. Start taking this inventory, buddy. So Mitch starts listing assets for removal. It looks expensive, but too. But then David produces another document. What, what, what is it you found? The invoice. The invoice. The Mitch goes to check it out. Ain't got nothing written. He spots similarities with the previous inventory. You just, you just changed that, mate. It's exactly the same document you just showed me. So all, all of a sudden changed to six sunbeds, optional X series. Maybe he wasn't born yesterday. The document <laughs> looks <laughs> almost the same as the first inventory David Tried. produced. Only this time, it has the specific exactly make and model numbers they were looking for. Exactly. He did that quick, it's exactly though. Exactly the same invoices. Exactly the same invoices. Yeah, but there's a couple of details changed that we wasn't happy with downstairs. Gareth compares the two documents closely. So look at this then. So this sunbeds? 17th of 12th, right. 2000. Are in this, this is funny. Same date on both invoices, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Which means they, they, give me they the last the give me the last four reference yeah. that number. Six six five two. Six 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 five two, same reference. Yeah. Give me the end balance, but seventy five thousand one hundred and sixty eight. Correct. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Something's not right here, mate. The agents are suspicious that David may have altered the first in Imagine getting caught up as a grown man. Imagine getting caught up in a lie as an adult. It hit different. <laughs> Voice he showed them, adding in extra detail. I get it though, he doing his best. He doing what he can, man. To confirm his ownership of the goods. I do believe you changed it. Right, you can believe in ghosts. It doesn't mean it's I Somebody's changed this, whether you did all those ghosts you're on about, <laughs> has changed this invoice. So I'm guessing it's you. The case has taken an unexpected turn. Ain't none even a say it will take at this point. all of the agent's investigative skills to get to the bottom of this situation. It's, it's, a, it's over. And they finna give us what they finna show me. Really, the set items goods on some weren't happy. I probably, I, somebody's changed this. I don't want to recap. All those ghosts you're on about <laughs> has changed this invoice. So I'm guessing it's you. Now, with go. no proof that David is the rightful owner of the goods in the salon, Gareth turns up the pressure. He's recording, Loki. Well, the the well, these asses can be removed, right? Have we got a number then? I got an old number, sir. Go on then. Gareth tries the number David has given him for Kaylee. Calls are not currently being connected. But then he spots something on David's phone. You still got on in your phone as Princess. Surely, if he wasn't with her, he'd be changing that from Princess to Kaylee. You've got to talk together, have you? It's clear that David and the debtor, Kaylee, are more closely connected than he initially he tried, no. The pressure seems to be getting too much. He tried to much. distance himself I didn't leave. You carry on. With David now gone, and with no proof that the goods don't belong to Kaylee, Gareth and Mitch could start the recovery process. But as this would incur extra fees, Gareth has a plan B. 
go up to a home address now. Yeah, let's get negative. I'm pay us now. Let's go over there. Go back to the shop and take everything. Something can be paid on this one. Definitely. Let's get negative. The agents now head to the residential address they have for Kaylee. They really gonna get mad. <laughs> if she doesn't pay up, they'll return to the David salon to be take there too. all the assets they've earmarked for removal. But as they arrive, they spot a work van parked outside. Perfect. Smart. The agents now suspect that someone involved with the tanning business has driven straight round to see Kaylee. Kaylee is there. Hey, Kaylee, all right? There's no sign of anyone from the tanning shop, but Kaylee immediately makes a surprising offer. I've got the money here if you need it. Duh! Do you, do you know how much, how much the yeah, buy is? we it? need it. What was it? £12,007.69. Yeah, you got it in cash? What's he? She starts pulling out pre packed bags of cash from a waste paper bin. I wish I had a bin of the money in the house, I got. Is it going to be all in cash or? Though she claims the debt is nothing to do with her, Kaylee produces the full balance of just over £12,000. She knew this day was coming. She was like, man, I'm gonna save my, all my light bill money. And here it is. Is it okay if I sit down to count that? Yeah. Thank you very much. This is very surprising. I would have never guessed that she was about to pull out $12,000 out of a garbage can. Is it unpaid electric bills? I think so. This isn't my money. This isn't my bill to pay for. It's nothing to do with me. It was in my name. It's not my... The David's, is it? I don't care. I just, no? I literally, it's nothing to do with me. I don't care. It's just the end. Yeah, it's done now. Done. In front of you, yeah, Kale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You had them rackets. Yeah, you happy with that? Perfect. Twelve bands gone. That's gotta feel. I, that's a punch in the heart. I ain't even gonna lie to you. As Kaylee has now paid off the debt in full, the case is resolved. All right, thanks for being decent. We appreciate that. Thank you, Kaylee. It's okay. She was right. decent too. Look at Kaylee's connection. Let's pound it. We got a uh, commission. Into the salon and where the money has come from remains a mystery. Don't even matter. Ka-ching! <laughs> Can't complain about that, mate. Turned up, didn't think we'd get a result. Walking out with a bag full of money in a pocket full of money. Might be days. You better go to the bank. Just cash it. Was this underwear just showing? Four days after the agent's visit, David Williams paid 800 towards the debt and set up a payment plan for 50 a week. He has kept up with the payments. Okay, surprise, surprise. Since our dealer from a home was sold two months after, he was evicted, obviously. That was it then. Listen, not a lot of negativity. All things went positive. For most parties. I'm gonna leave a like, comment.